All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. With the coronavirus and the stay-at-home order, I've had the opportunity to be introspective about my photography journey over the last few years. And one of the things that I've given some thought to is all the equipment that I've bought and acquired during that time. If you're familiar with photography or videography or vlogging, you may have heard the term GAS. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the term GAS is an acronym for Gear Acquisition Syndrome. Essentially, it's a joke about the tendency people in photography or videography have to get excited about new gear, whatever that might be, a new camera, a new lens, a new filter, a new gimbal, whatever, and then to go buy those things. I'm sure uh, people do this for a lot of reasons. That little dopamine hit you get when you buy something, and uh, I'm certainly not immune to it myself. For me, it was about seeing something really cool, like a particular kind of photography or a really cool vlogger who's got their technique down, and I would want to do that thing. Or maybe it was about thinking that my photography or vlog footage could be just a little bit better. And to be honest, getting that thing often didn't really result in what I was hoping it would. And now I have drawers and cabinets full of equipment uh, that I've gathered over the last few years and it just sits there collecting dust. So in this video, I want to talk about what I think I purchased that ultimately was a waste of my money, or at least money that could have otherwise been used wiser. And then I'll finish up with some thoughts about what I might have done differently if I could go back again. Also, I want to say that this is just how I feel about my experiences. You may and will have your own interests and needs and experiences, and that will make what gear you want totally unique to you. And I know that there are people for whom the enjoyment is the equipment, and that's totally fine too. There's nothing wrong with that. So don't think that my saying that I think I wasted money on something means I think you wasted money on that thing. To each their own. First, jumping from APS-C to full frame too quickly. When I got back into photography after years away from it, I first got a Sony a6000, a beginner camera. That started me on buying lenses and equipment and so on for APS-C cameras, but I quickly decided I wanted to jump to a full frame camera and ended up upgrading to an a7R2 within like six months or so. But by that point, I'd already bought several lenses and various other pieces of equipment for my APS-C camera, which I haven't resold and now just sits there. Uh, I think that while I was learning, I probably could have spent more time with that APS-C system, uh, which is cheaper, right? And I think I could have learned a lot more uh, that way and, and then maybe a little, been a little bit wiser as I, I, I kind of moved along uh, further into uh, the experience of photography and, and understood better what I wanted to do. Next, uh, just buying too many lenses. Uh, lenses are so fun to buy. It shows up and it's so great to unbox it and then to put it on your camera and it feels good. But I've bought so many lenses that I don't use that just sit there on my shelf. Uh, I shoot almost exclusively landscape photography these days. And for that, I shoot almost exclusively with my 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Like that is probably 95% of my photography but I still have the rest of the Holy Trinity, right? A 24 to 70 millimeter and a 70 to 200 millimeter. And then I have a bunch of primes that I almost never use. Like, oh, I, I wanna shoot astrophotography, so I'm gonna buy a 14 millimeter 2.8. Oh wait, I live in a densely populated suburban area that is super light polluted, so astrophotography is super difficult and hard to do, womp womp. Or I'm gonna buy a 35 millimeter prime because I'm gonna do some street photography for those two or three times I have an opportunity to do that each year. So another womp womp. And the same story for a handful of other lenses that I have, like an 85 millimeter for portraits that again, I never do, right? And I really should sell these lenses that I don't use, but I've honestly just never gotten around to it. I've been lazy or whatever. And, and maybe I'll use them, maybe. Next. Drones, ah, drones. <laughs> Never has there been a piece of equipment that I have wanted to use more that just sits on my shelf at home. In the drone shots, they just look so cool. But nonetheless, I've had three drones. Uh, my first one wandered off into the sunset one night, just lost connection with the controller and floated away, never to be seen again. I still imagine he's out there somewhere trying to take a sunset picture for me. My second drone, I dive bombed into the ocean one day because I was trying to take pictures of whales. And while flying it back to me, I descended without paying attention to the altitude and bounced it off the ocean. Interestingly enough, it did manage to make it back to me, but it never flew again. Mm -hmm. And now I have a third drone, a Mavic Air, just sitting there, doing no droning. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the laws around drones are really changing rapidly, both at a 
local and a federal level, a lot of places don't allow drones at all anymore. So if you fly them, you're really doing it at your own risk of fines or confiscation of the drone. Where I live in Southern California, there aren't many places that I can fly at all. Certainly not the places that I wanna fly. So every now and then I charge the batteries on my drone and let them drain away because I don't fly it. Next, vlogging gear. I think I had this idea that I was just gonna explode into the vlogging scene and really crank out videos. I had so much I wanted to share, or so I thought. Uh, and that was before I really understood what it was involved in creating good content for places like YouTube. You know, good stories, people, the things that people actually wanted to watch, not just filming me standing around. But before I came to that understanding, I had a secondary camera for vlogging, I had multiple gimbals I had tried, I had lab mics, shotgun mics, a 360 camera, a tripod, or second tripod, two gorilla tripods, variable indie filters, blah, 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 blah. And I just wasn't doing enough vlogging or YouTubing really to justify that much equipment. And of course, it, it, the equipment doesn't make the content, you make the content. But it was all fun to buy. <laughs> Next, graduated indie filters. Now, this is a tough one. There will certainly be people out there that disagree with me on this but I bought a whole set of Lee filters and they were expensive and I tried them out and I liked the shots that I got. They weren't bad, but ultimately I think I've come down on the side of bracketing my shots versus you know, uh, taking them with an indie grad filter. Uh, certainly every landscape photographer needs to decide for themselves what they prefer, bracketing or indie grads. Uh, but for me, I'm just not using my indie grad filters and they're expensive. That being said, I do use the big stopper and little stopper from Lee filters for long exposures. I do think the blue color cast they bring to photos is criminal for how expensive they are, but if you're shooting raw images, you can correct for that, but still, ridiculously, get, like, what's going on? Next, filters for every lens diameter. I chalked this up to a rookie mistake. I bought indie filters, polarizers, and so on for each lens size that I had, you know, 49 millimeters, 42 millimeters, 62 millimeters, and this is all before I learned about ring adapters. Just get ring adapters. It will save you from buying essentially a bunch of duplicative filters and it just works, it's good. Next, buying cheap filters, another rookie mistake. I usually think it's a good idea to test the waters with a product before buying something even moderately expensive. However, I wish I hadn't done that with filters. When you buy cheap filters, it just causes so many issues from color casting to vignetting. It's not worth it, don't do it. There are several great filter companies out there with pretty reasonable prices. Choose one of those and use their filters. I am not saying fork out huge amounts of money for those filters, just don't buy the cheapest filters you can. It's not worth it and ultimately costs you more money in the long run. Next, lots of bobs and sprockets. GoPro mounts, flash brackets, mini tripod heads, motion tripod heads, the list goes on and on. And you come across a piece of equipment and you think, yeah, I could use this. It's not expensive. I'll just add it to my Amazon cart and you hit that order button. But they do just end up sitting in a drawer somewhere. Maybe these things I use once or twice, but I've never put them in my camera bag when I go out shooting. They just sit there in that drawer. I probably don't need them. All right, so with that out of the way, what should I have bought? Now that's a tough question. When I started getting back into photography a few years ago, I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do. Uh, I had a history of portraits. Uh, in fact, when I was in my 20s, I uh, worked at a Glamour Shots. I was a photographer uh, there. Uh, and I kind of thought I wanted to go in that direction, but then I started to get really interested in landscapes, but I also loved the idea of street photography and travel photography. So I kind of wanted to do that too. And then there was this whole YouTube thing and I wanted to do that too. I loved the idea of sharing my experiences across the worldwide inner tubes. Each of these kinds of photography and videography needs different kinds of equipment. And instead of really thinking about that, I ended up getting it all over time. So what would I do differently if I was starting again and had some magical self-discipline about it? I think I would try to be intentional in exploring what it is that I wanted to do. Like, I was saying that I had all these ideas about what I wanted to do and I might be interested in, but they were more like vague feelings. So when I say I would try to be more intentional, I mean that I would try to put time into thinking specifically about what it is that I wanted to accomplish. Set some goals or objectives or whatever. And then this, I hope, would give me some direction 
and it would tell me where I should look and learn. And instead of bouncing around to different things, exploring them each for a bit, I would dive in and learn and hopefully I would better understand what kind of equipment it is that I needed, that I wanted and that I should actually buy instead of just getting a bunch of junk. Now, who knows, maybe that would lead me down the same path and I would have still ended up getting all the same junk. I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But that's what I would do differently, I think, if I, if I could. Okay, well, I hope uh, maybe this might have been insightful or helpful for someone out there. If you have any questions about my journey and the equipment I bought over the years, drop a comment down below. If you found this video interesting, hit that like button. And if you like my videos, I wouldn't mind if you subscribed. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves out there. I hope you stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.